Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from the Gettysburg Library and welcome to chapter 11, Continued of Dracula. The Pall Mall Gazette, 18 September, The Escaped Wolf, Perilous Adventure of Our Interviewer, Interview with the Keeper of the Zoological Gardens. After many inquiries and almost as many refusals and perpetually using the words Pall Mall Gazette as sort of talisman, I managed to find the keeper of the section of the zoological gardens in which the wolf department is included. Thomas Builder lives in one of the cottages in the enclosure behind the elephant house and was just sitting down to his tea when I found him. Thomas and his wife are hospitable folk, elderly and without children, and if the specimen I enjoyed of their hospitality be of the average kind, their lives must be pretty comfortable. The keeper would not enter on what he called business until the supper was over and we were all satisfied. Then, when the table was cleared, he had lit his pipe and said, Now, sir, you can go on and ask me what you want. You'll excuse me for refusing to talk of professional subjects for our meals. I gives the wolves and the jackals and the hyenas and all our section their tea afore I begins to ask them questions. How do you mean ask them questions? I queried, wishful to get him into a talkative humor. Itting of them over the head with a pole is one way. Scratching of their ears is another when gents is as flush wants a bit of show off to the gals. I don't so much mind the fuss, the itting with the pole afore I chucks in their dinner. But I waits till they've add their sherry and coffles, so to speak afore I tries on with the ear scratching. Mind you, he added philosophically, there's a deal of the same nature in us as in them their animals. Here's you a coming and arskin' of me questions about my business, and I that grumpy like that only for your bloom and arf quid, I'd a seen you blowed fust before I answer. Not even when you arsed me sarcastic like if you'd if I'd like you to arse the superintendent if you might ask me questions. Without offense, did I tell yer to go to L? You did. And when you said you'd report me for using of obscene language, that was it me over the ed. But the arf quid made that all right. I weren't to go into fight, so I waited for the food and did with my owl as the wolves and lions and tigers does. But Lord, love your art. Now that the old woman has stuck a chunk of her tea cake in me and rinsed me out with her bloomin' old teapot and I've lit up, you may scratch my ears for all you're worth and won't get even a growl out of me. Drive along with your questions. I know what you're a-coming at, that, that air-escaped wolf. Exactly. I want you to give me your view of it. Just tell me how it happened, and when I know the facts, I'll get you to say what you consider was the cause of it, and how you think the whole affair will end. All right, Governor. This ear is about the old story. That ear wolf, what we call Bersicker, was one of three gray ones that came from Norway to Jamrick's, which we bought him off four years ago. He was a nice, well-behaved wolf that never gave no trouble to talk of. I'm more surprised at him for wanting to get out, nor any other animals in the place. But there you can't trust wolves no more, nor woman. Don't you mind him, sir, broke in Mrs. Tom with a cheery laugh. He's just got mind in the animals so long that blessed if he ain't like an old wolf itself. But there ain't no arm in him. Well, sirs, about two hours after feeding yesterday, when I first heard my disturbance, I was making up a litter of the monkey house for a young puma, which is ill. But when I heard the yelping and owling, I came straight away. There was Berserker, a tearing like mad thing at the bars, as if he wanted to get out. There wasn't much people about that day, and close at hand was only one man, a tall, thin chap with a hook nose and pointed beard, with a few white hairs running through it. He had a hard, cold look and red eyes, and I took a sort of mislike to him, for it seemed as if it was him as they were irritated at. He had white kid gloves on his hands, and he pointed out the animals to me and says, Keeper, these wolves seem upset at something. Maybe it's you, says I, for I did not like the airs he gives himself. 
He didn't get angry as I hoped he would, but he smiled a kind of insolent smile with a mouth full of white sharp teeth. Oh no, they wouldn't like me, he says. Oh yes, they would, says I, uh, imitating him. They always like a bone or two to clean their teeth about tea time, which you as a bagful. Well, it was an odd thing, but the animals seen us talking, they lay down. And when I went over to Berserker, he let me stroke his ears, same as ever. That there man came over and blessed, but if he didn't put his hand and stroke the old wolf's ears too. Take care, says I, Berserker is quick. Never mind, he says, I'm used to him. Are you in the business yourself? I says, taking off my app for a man that trades in wolves and setter is a good friend of keepers. No, says he, not exactly in the business, but I have made pets of several. And with that, he lifts his at a perlite as a lord and walks away. Old Berserker kept looking arter him till he was out of sight and then went and lay down in a corner and wouldn't come out of the whole evening. Well, last night, so soon as the moon was up, the wolves here all began owling. There weren't nothing for them to owl at. There weren't no one near except some, someone that was evidently a calling a dog somewhere out back in the gardens in the park road. Once or twice I went out to see that all was right, and it was, and then the owling stop. Just before 12 o'clock I took a look around turning in and bust me, but when I came opposite old berserker's cage I see the rails broken and twisted about and the cage empty, and that's all I know for certain. Did anyone else see anything? One of our gardeners was a common home about the time from uh, Armony when he sees a big gray dog coming out through the garden edges. At least so he says. But I don't give much for it myself. For if he did uh, never said a word about it to his missus when he got home. And it was only after the escape of the wolf was made known that we had been up all night a-hunting one of the park for the berserkers that he remembered seeing anything. My own belief was that the harmony had got into his head. Now, Mr. Builder, can you account for any way of the escape of the wolf? Well, sir, he said with a suspicious sort of modesty, I think I can, but I don't know as how you'd be satisfied with the theory. Certainly I shall. If a man like you, who knows the animals from experience, can't hazard a good guess at any rate, who is even to try? Well then, sir, I accounts for it in this way. It seems to me that Air Wolf escaped simply because he wanted to get out. From the hearty way that both Thomas and his wife laughed at the joke, I could see that it had done service before and that the whole explanation was simply an elaborate sell. I couldn't cope in bandage with the worthy Thomas, but I thought I knew a sure way to his heart. So I said, now, Mr. Builder, we'll consider the first half sovereign worked off. And then, then this brother of his is waiting to be claimed when you've told me what you think will happen. Right you are, sir, he said briskly. You'll excuse me. I know for a chaffin of ye, but the old woman here winked at me, which was as much as telling me to go on. Well, I never, said the old lady. My opinion is this. That ear wolf is a hiding somewhere. The gardener, what didn't remember, said he was a galloping northward faster than a horse could go. But I don't believe him. For, you see, wolves don't gallop no more, no more nor dogs does. They not being built that way. Wolves is a fine things in a storybook, and I dare say when they gets in packs and does be chiving for something that's more afeard than they is, they can make a devil of a noise and chop it up wherever it is. But Lord bless you, in the real life, a wolf is only a low creature, not half so clever or bold as a good dog, and not half a quarter so much fighting him. This one ain't been used to fighting or even to providing for himself, and more like he's somewhere around the park a idin and a shiverin' of, and if he thinks at all, wondering where he's to get his breakfast from, or maybe he's got down some area and is a coal cellar. My eye, 
Won't some cook get a rum start when she sees green his green eyes a shining at her out of the dark? If he can't get food, he's bound to look for it, and mayhap he may chance to light on a butcher shop in time. If he doesn't, and some nursemaid goes a walking off with a soldier, leaving of the infant in the per perambulator, well, then I shouldn't be surprised if the census is one baby the less. That's all. I was handing him the, so the half-sovereign when something came bobbing up against the windows, and Mr. Builder's face doubled its natural length in surprise. God bless me, he said, if it ain't old berserker come back by hisself. He went to the door and opened it, a most unnecessary proceeding as it seemed to me. I have always thought that a wild animal never looks so well as when some obstacle of pronounced durability is between us. A personal experience has intensified rather than diminished that idea. After all, however, there is nothing like a custom, for neither Builder nor his wife thought any more of the wolf than I should of a dog. The animal itself was as peaceful and well-behaved as that father of all picture wolves, Red Riding Hood's quandron friend, whilst moving her confidence in masquerade. The whole scene was an unutterable mixture of comedy and pathos. The wicked wolf that for half a day had paralyzed London and set all the children in town shivering in their shoes was there in a sort of penitent mood and was received and petted like a sort of vulpine prodigal son. Old Builder examined him all over with most tender solicitude and when he had finished with his penitent said, There. I knew the poor old chap would get into some kind of trouble. Didn't I say it all along? Here's his head all cut and full of broken glass. He's been a-getting over some bloomin' wall or other. It's a shame that people are allowed to top their walls with broken bottles. This ears what come of it. Come along, berserker. He took the wolf and locked him up in a cage with a piece of meat that satisfied, in quantity at any rate, the elementary conditions of the fatted calf and went off to report. I came off too to report the only exclusive information that is given today regarding the strange escapade at the zoo.